Good morning, welcome to Secret London with me, Mark Munro, and today we are myth busting. Different format completely today, three secrets of London. Now, only one of those secrets has a true backstory, the other two are complete myths. What I want you to do is to keep watching and see if you can figure out which of the three is true and what other two are total myths. First stop, Trafalgar Square. Let's go. Did you know that Trafalgar Square houses London's smallest police station? Let's go take a look. Now, those of you who've been to Trafalgar Square before, I'm sure would have walked past this structure many times before. It's London's smallest police station. It was erected in 1926. It was big enough to house one policeman and two prisoners, although no toilet facilities. The reason you may not have noticed this police station before is because it is actually a hollowed out lamppost. It's very well disguised. The residents of Charing Cross didn't want a police box in the 1920s. So the Metropolitan Police decided to disguise it inside this lamppost. They've done a pretty good job of it, I think. Inside, there were communications via a single telephone line that went directly to Scotland Yard. Now, if the policeman wasn't actually in the station, if a call came in from Scotland Yard, the lamp on top would start flashing. It would alert the policeman and he'd come running to the police station and answer the call. Also, that ornate lamp on top is no ordinary lamp. It comes from HMS Victory, Nelson's flagship. Can you see that, Nelson? Does it remind you of your beautiful ship? These thin, narrow windows were fashioned on the outside of the police station so that the policemen inside could have a view across the whole of Trafalgar Square. So is this really London's smallest police station? Stay tuned to find out. Gabrielle Bonner Chanel, or as the world knew her, Coco Chanel. Elegant, sophisticated, chic, daring, who could forget that little black dress she created that instilled her as one of the world's most iconic fashion designers. Coco Chanel was a woman who could steal any man's heart. And one man's heart she did steal was that of the second Duke of Westminster, Hugh Grosvenor. On a visit to Monaco in the 1920s, the Duke of Westminster was introduced to Coco Chanel and he instantly fell in love with her. Having started their affair, Coco Chanel made regular trips to London to visit the Duke of Westminster. He was head over heels in love with her, asking for a hand in marriage on numerous occasions. But Coco Chanel refused, saying, there have been many duchesses of Westminster, but there is only one Coco Chanel. There was nothing that the Duke wouldn't do for Coco. Bringing her to London, buying her properties in the upmarket district of Mayfair, purchasing land for her on the coast of Monte Carlo. But still, his love remained unrequited. The Duke never gave up his pursuit of this alluring temptress. And in a final act of public affection to show that his love was genuine, he embossed the Coco Chanel logo on every street lamp in the city of Westminster. Sadly, this huge public show of affection proved fruitless. And after 10 years, the love affair ended. Some men, eh, they'll do absolutely anything when they fall in love. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, darling, yeah. Yeah, I'm just filming. Oh, it doesn't matter, no, I can, I can finish now if you want. 
Yeah, it's not a problem. Of course, I'll, yeah, I'll pick some up on the way home, the ones you really like. Of course, anything. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. I've made my way to Lambeth Bridge. And just to the north of Lambeth Bridge is Westminster Bridge. Lambeth Bridge is painted red. Westminster Bridge is painted green. Now there's a reason for that. Westminster Bridge sits closest to the Houses of Commons. Now the benches in the Houses of Commons are covered with green leather. The benches in the House of Lords are covered in red leather. And the House of Lords is nearest Lambeth Bridge. So Lambeth Bridge here is painted red in honour of those red benches. And Westminster Bridge, which sits nearest the Houses of Commons, is painted green in honour of those green leather benches. So which of these three secrets of London has the real backstory? If you thought that this was London's smallest police station, well, you're absolutely wrong. This was never a police station, let alone London's smallest police station. However, it was used for one policeman to stand, keep an eye on Trafalgar Square during the gatherings and protests of the 1920s and 30s. 200 yards behind me was Charing Cross Police Station, so there would never have been a need for a police station here in the square. Also, all police stations in London have a blue lamp outside with the word police across. And another thing, I'm afraid that ornate lamp on top does not come from HMS Victory. Sorry, Nelson. If you thought that the Duke of Westminster embossed the Coco Chanel logo on every lamp post in Westminster, then I'm afraid you're wrong. The story's a little bit more prosaic than that. These lamp posts were put up in the 1950s by Westminster City Council. I kind of wish that this story was true, but it's not. So that leaves us with the bridges. The bridges are indeed painted in the colours of the House of Lords and the House of Commons. Lambeth Bridge red, House of Lords. Westminster Bridge green, House of Commons. If you've enjoyed today's episode of Secret London with me, Mark Munro, leave any comments down below, the good, the bad and the ugly. I read them all. And if you really enjoyed it, why not subscribe? Until next time, stay tuned.